Hold. Merry Christmas. Welcome to Mount Carmel Ministries, Vicksburg. We're here at 2015 Grove Street, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Our pastors are Mitchell and Deborah Dent. And we just would like to invite you to worship with us today. If you are watching over the airwaves, we ask that you hit your share button and share the broadcast with someone that you know needs to hear a word from the Lord today. Amen. And if you need a ride to get here in person, please look on our Facebook page. You'll see the church van that has the number on it. You can call and get a ride to church and back home. Now, wherever you are, we just encourage you to reach out and get what you need from the Lord today. Again, welcome. If you're watching over the airways, now we're going to have scripture by our own Deacon Coleman and prayer by Minister Wilson. Good morning, Merry Christmas. Would you please stand up and open your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to start the 51st verse. First Corinthians chapter 15. Starting at the 51st verse. The word of the Lord reads, Behold, I show you a mystery. We should not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And Lord, a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. O oh, gracious Father who are in heaven, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of all faith. Oh, Father, we just first, Father, we just want to thank you for just waking us up this morning. Father, thank you for just letting us be in our right mind. Oh, Father, it's just letting us realize, Father, that this is where we need to be today in your house of worship. Oh, Father, we ask this morning, Father, that you just forgive us for all of our sins. Because, Father, we don't want anything to stand in front of your blessing and the movement of your Holy Spirit in this place today. So, Father, you said it in your word, Father, that uh, Jesus said that if he be lifted up, that he'll draw all men unto himself. Oh, and Father, we're just praying, Father, right now, Father, it's just for a big catch today, Father. Oh, Father, that hearts be changed today. Minds be changed today. Oh, Father, that it, that, it just simple outlooks be changed today. Oh, Father, we're praying, Father, because we know that when your word go forth, Father, 
Oh, Father, that all captives be set free. And, Father, we know that when your anointing flow, Father, oh, Father, that it breaks all yokes. Oh, Father, that it breaks all strongholds, Father. Oh, Father, and you said in your word, Father, that, it, that the rage is not given to the swift or the strong, but, Father, for those who will endure unto the end. And, Father, we just claim it, Father, for enduring power through your word this morning. Oh, Father, we just claim it, Father, that breakthroughs happen all in our homes this morning, Father. Oh, Father, we just pray, Father, that for those things to be reconnected that had been disconnected this morning. And, Father, we know that this day has been, been preordained by you even from the foundations of the earth. And, Father, I just pray, Father, as your word go forth, Father, oh, Father, that change will be broken. Changes will be made in our life. And, Father, that we will have love in our heart, each one for the other. And, Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit just come in and just take control of this worship service today. Oh, Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. And, Father, we just claim, Father, that we will have a breakthrough this morning. And, Father, not only have a breakthrough, Father, that through your word that we have the strength to stay through that breakthrough. And we thank you, Father, and we ask these blessings for every church door to open up in your name. And in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Oh, come on, one more time. Hallelujah. Isn't our God good? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I want you, if you would, just stand and give God a hand clap of praise real quickly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, just thank God in advance for what he's doing, what he's already done. Amen. Glory to God. We're in the second Sunday of 2023. Amen. And you know, uh, last Sunday we, we saw that uh, that hidden at football game, but we look at how God, had, what God has done. Amen. Our God is able. Amen. How when a nation comes together and pray on one accord, amen, glory to God, hearts are changed, minds are changed, healing takes place, somebody shout amen, glory to God, oh, he said where two or three or what, gather together in my name, there I am in the midst, amen, and how many of you know you can't beat God doing what God does, amen, glory to God, so again, we thank God for you, we thank God that you're here this morning, we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise, we're going to get into this word this morning, uh, we are still believing God for our musicians. Glory to God. I, you know, I would bless you with a song. Glory to God. Uh, but hallelujah. I, I, didn't get a, I didn't get a whole lot of amens for that. But, but I, I'm not, I'm not going gonna, gonna to sing this morning. Bless the Lord. Uh, I want you to go to, uh, just, just real quickly, go to uh, Luke. You're going to see it on the board. I'm not going to have you read the passage this morning. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say something and we're going to pray and get into, into the word. Father God, we give you the glory. We honor you. We praise you. God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for there's nobody like you. Lord God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to come and share your word today. Not of me, oh God, but all of you. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. We thank you, oh God, that your word will go forward uninterrupted by any satanic by the mind of force. We thank you, O oh God, that hearts and minds will be changed. We thank you that people will be healed and delivered. We give you the glory, God, in advance for all these blessings that you're going to cause to flow into the lives of these your people. And, Father, we will be careful to give you and you alone the, the honor, the glory, and the praise for all that you do in this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. What I really want to just get into your spirit this morning is that uh, you can see the title. Uh, uh, it, it is not, go, go back a minute, amen. It's not always what it looks like. It's not always what it looks like. A lot of times when we look at situations, we see things, we judge based on what we see. And oftentimes what we see ain't all that's there. Somebody shout amen. 
That's why the Bible tells us to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. Because when we start to believe even in the things that we can't see, then those things that we can't see become possible. Amen. Hallelujah. If the enemy can stop you from believing in what you can't see, then he'll stop you from seeing what God said you could have. You've got to understand that God got something bigger for you than what you see. Amen. I, I, I've learned in my growing up, my, 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 my wife is a, is a uh, 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 what she call it, a, 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 a military child, military, Af oh, military, amen. Military brat, amen. In the, in the fact that her father was uh, in the military and they moved around. But one of the beautiful things about her moving around is that a lot of times the Air Force bases were located near historical sites. And whenever they would study these historical sites in school, she could relate to them because she had been there. Somebody shout amen. It's good to know that when God starts to move you around, he puts you in places so that you're able to see things that you can relate to greater things. Somebody shout amen. If, 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 the, if your neighborhood is the only neighborhood you know, then you'll be locked in that. But God wants to open it up, amen, because it's not always what it looks like. Just because your neighborhood got a lot of lack in it doesn't mean that there's lack in the world. I think I saw a picture of Dubai, I believe it is, and y'all know Dubai, y'all know Dubai, uh, uh, I mean, it's all this fancy place, but then on the other side, there's some, there's, there's some lack. But see, sometimes you'll see the, 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 the abundance, but then on the other side, you'll see the lack, and because and, 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 it, it ain't always what it looks like. But as we're going to talk today, glory to God, I want you to understand, don't judge all the time by your eyes. Oh, sometimes you can believe your lying eyes. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> You got to learn how to believe in the word of God alone. Somebody said, believe in the word of God. And so that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all all right? I'm not going too fast, am I? Hallelujah. He said, slow down. Okay. Okay. See, uh, uh, with God, there's always hope, even when, there, when you're in a what looks like a hopeless situation. With God, there's always hope, even when you're in what looks like a hopeless situation. It's only because your hope now is in God. Your hope is in what you can't see. When he says this in Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. He, he's letting you know, glory to God, your hope has to be in the unseen things. Amen. But can I tell you something? It's only unseen to the natural eye, but you already see it in your spiritual eyes. Amen. Glory to God. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I mean, you, we talked about the ball being in your court uh, last week. You know, when you get ready to take that shot, glory to God, you got to have already seen yourself making the shot. Amen. And when you miss it, you got to be willing to take it again. Somebody shout amen. Glory. You will, you will miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Oh, did you hear what I said? Glory to God. So don't be afraid to take a shot. Amen. Glory to God. Just because it don't look good right now doesn't mean that, 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 that it ain't good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just because it don't. Look, have you ever been cooking something? Hey, hey, go. Any cooks in the house? You ever been cooking something and it didn't look good, amen? And somebody looked at it and said, ooh, that don't look good, until they tasted it. And then they went back and got some more. Y'all know what some more is, amen? Glory. They, 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 you, you came in there and they had their finger. Come on now. Come on. Because it didn't look good to the eye. But glory to God, it, it tastes good. Somebody shout amen. Well, tell you it's not always what it looks like. So now we're going to go to Luke, the, uh, the 16th chapter. In Luke, the 16th chapter, we're going to look at that verses 19. Uh, we're well, actually from uh, uh, 19 to 31. That's a whole lot of scriptures. Don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. Amen. So look what it says. There was a certain man who's that, who, who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. But there was a, a certain beggar named Lazarus who, uh, full of sores who was laid at his gate. Let's go to the next one. Uh -huh. desiring to be fed from the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, so that it was that the beggar died, and he was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man died and was married. Come on. And being in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes, and he saw Abraham afar off in Lazarus' bosom. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip his, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. Come on. But Abraham said, son, son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides, 
uh, and besides all this, between us, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who, are, who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Come on. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that, they may, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Come on. And Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them uh, from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses or the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one raises from the dead. Somebody shout amen. Now, 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 there's a lot in that, man. There's a lot in that. Let's unpack it, amen. I need to just tell you right up front, it ain't always what it looks like. It ain't always what it looks like. See, this rich man looked like he had it going on. Anybody ever know? Have you ever looked like you had it going on? But on inside, you was tore up from the floor up, amen? Uh, see, a lot of times things can look a certain way, but they ain't the way that they look. Amen. And see, we can't walk all the time by what we see. We got to have faith to believe in what God has said. Are y'all still with me? The, the Bible says he wore purple and fine linen. We find that the, the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31, that's what she wore. Ro purple and linen is a symbol of royalty. Jesus had a coat, uh, a linen garment that was made without seam. Amen. It meant that you, you it, that thing cost a lot of money. Amen. So a lot of times, glory to God, we'll look at these trappings on the outside and we'll start to think, oh, hallelujah, they got it going on. But you got to go a little deeper. Tell your neighbor you got to go a little deeper. Find somebody say you got to go a little deeper. The Bible says he fared sumptuously. That means that he was eating good. Oh, glory to God. That, that, that means that he was banqueting, amen. Well, he was feasting, amen. You know, I'm going to just go and say, you ever went to Beachwood and got one of them good old steaks? Oh, y'all don't need it. Come on now. Oh, you, 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 y'all don't know who you like to eat. Come on now. I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of prophesying some things. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, 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 he fired something. But then it talks about the beggar. It says the beggar, he was, uh, uh, he was identified by name. Now, when you read the Bible, and you hear a certain man or a certain woman, you have to understand that this is not a parable. This is actually a story. This is actually something. But they don't identify the rich man, but they identify the man. Amen. And I, I, and I said, God, why do you do that? And, and God said, well, well, I need you to understand that a lot of times uh, 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 people, know of, pe people know of me, but they don't know me. Because they make no effort to really get to know me. You see, God said this, this year, it's time out for knowing of God. And you got to know God, amen? And you got to know God so much, here it is, B, you, that he, know, he knows your name. Oh, God, I feel like he knows my name. Glory to God. You got to know that he knows your name. And watch this now. He'll call you by your name. Glory to God. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? And see, this rich man, he's only referred to by what he had. Uh, and for us sometimes in this world, we think because of what he got, he got it going on. He got it going on. He just got some stuff. But y'all understand what I'm saying? But the beggar... Although it looked like he didn't have anything, the beggar is identified by God because God knows his name. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, he says a good name is better to have than five riches. Oh, glory. And how do you get a good name? You get a good name by doing the things that please God. See, every now and then, you got to stop trying to please you. Help me, Holy Ghost. And you got to decide, I'm going to live my life, God, that I can be the best you you want me to be. Oh, God. I don't want to be the best me I can be. I want to be the best be. I want to be the best be that you want me to be. Amen. And I can only be the best be that you want me to be by being with you. Oh, God. By spending time in your presence and allowing you to lead me and guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I will not stray. Lord, if you walk, come on, church, each day, with, come on now, God wants to take you somewhere, but you got to be willing to allow God. Oh, hallelujah. How many want a good name? Just let God do it, amen? So the rich man, he didn't make a whole lot of effort to know God. My question to you this morning is, is are you making an effort to know, to really know God? Uh, see, a lot of folks are satisfied with being known by God. But what satisfies 
God is when you start to do things that let other people know that you are open for God. That your life now becomes an, a, a reflection of the God that's on the inside of you. Ooh, hallelujah. I heard, I, I like to watch the show Criminal Mind. My wife don't like to watch it. But, 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 but you know, the police in me, they're killing me. Uh, and, 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 and this guy said, behavior is the mirror by which reveals the true you. See, if your behavior ain't like Christ, then you ain't like Christ. Too much. Oh, no, no. I'm just giving you what the word of God says. Amen. You got to understand that. that how, uh, can I talk to the kids for a minute? How you act when your mama and daddy ain't around uh, is not, uh, not a reflection of them. It's a reflection of you. The real you. Come on now. Hallelujah. Now, uh, uh, how many know that? Uh, they laugh it up in here. How many know that when, 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 when the report comes back to your, your mom and daddy, how much they act just like you, how well behaved they are? You just, you know how, you, you, know how we, you know how we swell up? <laughs> I, I got to go here. Y'all just preach that. Y'all pray for me. Amen. Now, 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 now sometimes when the report comes back and, 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 and it's, it's negative, then, 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 <laughs> Yeah, we point to the other spouse. That, 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 they side of the family. Come on, y'all pray for me, amen. Glory to God. Because, am I telling the truth? And see, we got to get with the word of God because that's the, oh, thank you, God. I, I, I think that I fix it. Glory to God. That's why the, 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 the parents got to pray together. Glory to God. The parents got to come together and be on one accord so that the child or the children can start to reflect the values of the parents. And then, but then let me go a little further. The parents' values have to be reflected in the word of God or a reflection of the word of God. So you, uh, 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 Sister Mary t- said, you can't sell a product that you don't use. Can you tell me how the cologne smells and you ain't never smelled it? And then how you pushing it and you ain't voting on yourself? Y'all okay? So, 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 so you can't share Christ if you don't know Christ. You can't share God if you don't know God. Amen? And you got to get to know God for yourself. Amen? Glory to God. Your mama can pray for you. Your daddy can pray for you. But at some juncture, you got to learn how to pray for yourself. Uh huh. But at some juncture, David said, I've learned to encourage myself in the Lord. Did you ever have one of them days, help me, Holy Ghost, that, 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 that don't nobody call you with an encouraging word? And you looking at your phone and say, Lord, oh, please let somebody call me and encourage me. Help me, Jesus. And then after a while, you mess around and start, Lord, you know you's a good God. Huh? Oh, wait a minute now. You learned that you can encourage yourself. Amen. His body was cursed. Can I be country for me? His body was killed. That's, my wife must get upset when I say the words like that. Uh, but but his, his body was covered with soap. Soap. I mean, and, and, and he's laying at the rich man's gate. But I want to tell you, there are times in your life that you will get help from God from an unlikely. You know, we like we, 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 we like to they tell God who we want to help us. Oh, they gotta look a certain way, they gotta have a certain thing. We, we, the Bible says, be careful how you entertain strangers, for you may be entertaining an angel on the way. You got you, you got this uh, the old saints used to have look, look, when you get old, you start to get wise. Or maybe wiser. <laughs> Old folks used to say, any way you bless me, Lord, and I'll be satisfied. Man, they even made a song. Any way you bless me, Lord. Uh, come on now. Y- 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 come on now. Now we don't got so, God, if you don't bless me this way, it didn't come from you. I saw this thing one time. This, 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 this man was, was at the pearly gates, and, 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 and I don't believe he was going to get in. And, 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 and what had what had happened was, they had young folks. What had happened was he was drowned, and then God sent a rowboat, and he said, "Now the Lord's gonna save." 
Then God sent a bigger boat. He said, now the Lord's going to say. Then God sent a, a, a yacht. He said, did, did the Lord, the Lord's going to say. But then he drowned. And, and he up there talking about, God, I thought you were going to save me. And God said, why you turn down them three boats that I sent you? See, a lot of times when the help shows up, because it don't show up how we thought it ought to show up, we think it ain't God. Can I tell you, it ain't always what it looked like. In the book of uh, First King, go to the next one, real quick. In the book of uh, 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 First King, come on, come on, come on, help me out, help me out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Seventeen chapter. Uh, Elijah had told Ahab, "It ain't gonna rain for the span of three and a half years, or it ain't gonna rain till the Lord tell me to tell you it's gonna rain." Amen. And God said, I need you to go down by the brook, drink from the brook. I've commanded a raven to bring you, to feed you. He's going to bring you meat and bread in the evening and meat and bread, uh, you know, in the afternoon. Amen. And then when that, when, when the brook dried up, I done commanded a widow woman to take care of you. See, 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 see so those are two unlikely sources, but, but, but Elijah did it and it happened, played out just like God said. Now, here you got this poor man laid at the rich man's gate. Now, the, the, uh, when you read and do a little research, the Bible says that dogs came and licked his sores. Uh, research says in a dog's saliva, there are some things that, that prevent infection. And research says that if a dog licked your sore, sometimes that, 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 that sore heal twice as fast as a sore that wasn't licked by the dog. And so God sent the dogs to come and lick his See, every now and then, brothers and sisters, you got to understand, help will come from an area that you least expect. And you got to be willing to receive it. Amen. See, 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 see. Don't, 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 don't turn your nose down on the blessing. Your mind used to say, even a drunk man tell a folk tale. See, sometimes I remember when we started our church, help was on the road, and we were in the image building, amen. And I'm teaching the class, we're all teaching a Bible study, and I, I'm, 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 I'm teaching good, hallelujah. I'm gonna say so myself, amen. And, and, and people were, you know, they were kind of looking, and I believe they were into it. And then somebody came to the door, and they were tore up from the floor up front and said, I need to see the pastor. And, and, and the brother did his best. To, to, you know, pacify him and send him away. And to finally, he started to ease up the eyes. Well, we see me teaching. You know, I wasn't feeling no kind of way. I just, you know, I just got, and she said, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to fight it now. I don't know. Because I'm about to see. She said, for her to stop drinking for a minute and come there and tell me I gotta tell you I received it I gotta tell you I, I look I didn't smell the alcohol after, after that my my, my my whole perspective changed because it let me know that God. So God knows how to feed you. Amen. Can we can, 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 can get going? Y'all good? Watch it. Watch it. Tell your neighbor, God is up to something. Tell him again, God is up to something. One of the things that happened, glory to God, both the rich man and Lazarus had something in common. Both of them died. Hebrews tells us it's appointed unto man once to die. But that's the judgment. So you got to understand, once you die, there's going to be a judgment. Amen. And, and, and you ain't going to, you are not going to be able to get away. Hallelujah. You got to understand that God's going to judge. Somebody said God's going to judge. Romans chapter 14, real quickly. Romans chapter 14, 11 and 12, look what it says. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to thee, and every tongue shall confess, so that each of us shall give an account to God, account of himself to God. 
So you got to think, think, look, 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 look. You can't go in there and talk about my mama and them didn't tell me nothing. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. You, 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 you. The Bible says you're going to have to give an account of yourself to God. Amen. And, 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 and in other words, you've got to decide that you're going to live right so that you can please God. Amen. It's a, it's a decision that you, and look, look, we talked the other night about, well, don't get the revelation too late. Amen. Because uh, homeboy him, the rich man, he got the revelation that hell was real. But he didn't get it till he was in hell. Don't go to hell and then realize that there is a hell. Can I tell you, go take my word for it. It exists. How do you know? Because the Bible tells me so. Lord God. Uh, that, that's, I don't need to go there. To find out, amen. I have read them books about, you know, uh, you know, my 30 minutes in hell. I, look, I don't want 30 seconds. I don't read enough to know that, I, and I believe in my spirit that it's real. Amen. So I do not have to experience it, amen. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. Look what he says in Revelation. This, this, this is why you got to understand how you, you got to live. Revelation 14, 13, look what it says. I heard a voice from heaven saying, right, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord from now on. See, when you die, you want to die in the Lord. You want to die knowing that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. Amen. He said, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord uh, 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 from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that, the, that, that they may rest from their labors and what? Their works. What? In other words, I know, I know we said not by works that any man should boast, but when you get saved, there is work to do. Amen. When you get saved, God has responsibility for you. Amen. I, I, I was, I, I, uh, it, me, 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 you okay? I, I was telling the court, I love the way he do that. Amen. I love the way he do that. Amen. Man, uh, he be posting, what were they, they, whether it's the volleyball or basketball or football, that joke will be there. Amen. I'm going to tell you about this lady right over here at the court. She, 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 she told me about her son, her oldest son. He, was, he, he ran track. He ran track. He ran track. He wasn't fast, but he ran. Hallelujah. And she said, she said he was, they was up in the stand, and he was coming in dead last. But when he said, just, just, just. Then when he was coming in, he was looking at them in the stand and said, And you know what she was doing? Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. God's good. Amen. But I need you to know your works going to follow you. If you ain't got no works, what's following you? Minister Wilson, when he preaches all the time, he said, what kind of timber are you sending up? You see, if you want God to build something for you, what you sending God to use for material? Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. But can I tell you? He, the prepared place is for the people who prepare to go to the place that's been prepared. If you ain't prepared to go to the place, come on, church. Amen. Here they are. The rich man get revelation that hell is. Fuck this. Gets revelation. About Abraham, because he's in Abraham's room. Amen. One of the one is in a place of torment, and the other one is in a place where he's in. You know, not, 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 which one you want? To which one you want? Amen. And 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 when he starts talking, Abraham is saying, "In your lifetime, what you receive good, but in his lifetime, he received evil things." But now he's coming and you're talking. Can I tell you this? The rich man had an opportunity to be godlike. He had an opportunity to be godlike to share in the riches that he had. Amen. All he had to do was open up the gate and say, Lazarus, come on up in here. I, 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 I cannot eat all this by myself. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Well, look, I, I got a new robe in there that you can put on. Oh, y'all understand what I'm saying? See, see many times. God gives us the opportunity to do something, but again, maybe because of what it looks like, we don't take advantage of the opportunity to glorify God. Amen. And God said, I need you to start glorifying me in the things that you do. Are y'all still with me?
He told him uh, there was a great gulf fixed. That gulf is sin. Amen. Sin is anything that's tr is that's against God. You can put it like that. Anything that's against. And, 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 and he said, because of sin, you can't come from there. We can't come from you. Amen. We, how many know that sin separates you from from God? Nothing separates you from God's love, but a sin that will get you sent to hell if you don't get rid of the sin. And see, you can get rid of the sin by confessing. Amen. A hallelujah. Repenting. Come on, church. And letting go of it. Somebody shout amen. Look, look, see, see, see. That's why, that's why, that's why, uh-huh, I'm going to say that. That's why you can't, you can't, you, thank you. You got to stop saying, I ain't ready to forgive. You got to stop saying, I'm not ready to forgive. Because tomorrow, not, tomorrow is not promised. Amen. And if you got unforgiveness in your heart, that's separation. Amen. Can I just tell you this? Amen. Glory to God. God is a righteous judge. He's righteous. Uh, glory to God. He, he is loving. He is kind. He is merciful. But glory to God, he's still righteous. And God can't go against his word. And if he says sin is a separator and you still got sin in your life, guess what? Instead of ending up before the great uh, 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 the, 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 the judgment seat of Christ, that's a good one. Amen. That's where you get your reward. You can end up... At the great white throne of judgment is that's where you get your judgment. That's where you get your sentence. And your sentence not is in heaven. It's not being in heaven. Your sentence is that you're going to do for hell eternally. That's where you're going to be. Amen. Ain't nobody shout right now, but it's going to get good. 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 Go to Matthew. Come on. Come on down to Matthew. Yeah, okay. Look, look, look. See, look. Jesus is talking. Look what Jesus is talking. Verse 31. He said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy, all the holy angels with him, then, we'll sit at, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will gather before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And when he when, and when and he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those who are on his right hand, "Come, be blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for the for, from the foundation of the world." Remember, it's a prepared place for, for people who are prepared to go to the place that he's prepared. He said, "For when I was hungry, you gave me food." When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you came and visited me. Come on now. Glory to God. Then the righteous. Uh, now, now, no, notice, he, did a, he identifies those who do this as the righteous. Amen. And the Bible said, he who practices righteousness is righteous. See, you just can't know about it and not practice it. Y'all better help me now, glory to God. See, a lot of folks know what is the right thing to do, but won't do the right thing. Glory to God. And God says in Philippians, it is God who will work in you both to will. In other words, God said, I will help you do what's right. All you got to do is ask me. Then the righteous will answer and say, uh, say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? Or we see you uh, a stranger and, and, and take you in, naked and clothe you. Or when did we see you sick and in prison and come to visit? In other words, look, when they did it, they weren't trying to get a cell. They weren't even thinking about getting recognized for doing it. They did it because it was in the Oh, hallelujah. It was in their heart to do. Can I tell you a little bit something about David when the right thing was in your heart? Not David, but Solomon. The Bible says in Chronicles, uh, uh, First Chronicles, the first chapter in Chronicles, that when, when, when Solomon is made king of, of, of everything, uh, Solomon said, God, I need you to give me wisdom and knowledge uh, and understanding that I may judge these great people of yours. God come back and said, God said, oh, boy, you something else with yourself. He said, because this was in your heart, you didn't ask me to kill your enemies. You didn't ask for riches. You didn't. He said, everything you asked me for, 
I'm going to give you. And everything I told you you didn't ask me for, I'm going to give you that too. Because it was in your heart. You see, God trying to show us that the stuff we do that glorifies him has to flow from our heart. Glory from my heart. Hallelujah. It's got to flow from my heart. Amen. So we got to learn to depend on God. And look, you got to learn to depend on God alone. Amen. See, what that song said, all of my help, my help, my help come from the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all all right? When Abraham was about 100 years old, he finally won the first test. He said, I'm amazed how I'm afraid to come with you this far from you. And, and, and Abraham got to the point where he finally believed everything that God had said. And even though he was 100 years old, he said he pressed against him. Abraham, in, in, in other words, he had a hopeless situation, but he put his hope in God. Sarah, Sarah would have been barren all of her life, never been able to bear children. But now, glory to God, the Bible says in Hebrew, she received strength to receive glory to God. And she, they, they, they now have the son Isaac, amen, because they got fully persuaded. Tell your neighbor that you got to be fully persuaded. You got to be fully persuaded. You got to be fully persuaded, amen. So even in what looks like a hopeless situation, you got to learn to trust in God. Somebody said you got to learn to trust him, amen. Irregardless of how bad it might look, you got to decide, I'm fully persuaded. How many believe every word that's in the Bible? Amen. So you got to get to the point where you don't debate the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. And folk will always come at you and try to get you to debate the word of God. You know, uh, uh, the angel Gabriel had it so good. Oh, hallelujah. When the devil came and said, you need to tell me. You need to tell me where, you, where, where, where y'all buried Moses. And, and, and Gabriel, like, you know, uh, God buried Moses. I don't know where Moses buried. And, 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 and they didn't get in another base. The angel Gabriel said, the Lord rebuke you. See, every now and then when, when, when folks come up, I, and, and, and you, you ain't got to entertain that crazy stuff. Because a lot of times, all, all they're doing is trying to get you to take your focus. For whatever reason, the enemy can sense when God has blessings getting ready to flow your way. And the only thing that can mess up the blessing from flowing in your life is your mouth. Because y'all know, son, I got this. I'm going to tell you. You don't need to say nothing. Oh, folks will say this. Hush. Huh? You know, uh, uh, what was that, folks? I remember when he used to walk into the church, amen, and I told him that, you know, this was a song I liked. So the choir, you know, they're going to amp me up the day I was going to preach. I was using King Solomon, Lord God, and, and, and they came in and said, Hush, hush, somebody calling my name. Whoa, you know, when I got ready to preach, I was ready to preach, so no, glory to God. They had amped me, they had tuned me up, helped me go. But, 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 but the essence of that, though, sometimes you got to Just like Zechariah would be named mute until John the Baptist was born. Because his mouth couldn't make sense. Amen. That's why you have to, what's the book y'all were? Watch your mouth. Every now and then you gotta learn how to watch your mouth. For death and life are in the power of your tongue. Amen. How many know that you've been called to be kings and priests? And so out of your mouth, you can decree some things, amen, and declare some things. Job says, thou shalt decree a thing, and it, what you say, shall be established unto you, amen. So if you're, if you're not satisfied with the way your life is going right now, Hebrews 11 says, 11 and 3 says, our words are framed by our words. So you got to go back and look at what kind of words you're using about your life. I ain't going to never have that. That's why you ain't got it. I'm always going to be sick. I chew, I chew, I chew. Come on now. Talk back to me. I'm not picking from you. Come on now. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. According to the word of God, you're going to have what you say. And see, what the enemy will do is he'll, he'll give you the symptoms even though you ain't got the thing. 
missed that glory to God. Uh, you be running around here sneezing because you said you catching a cold and you ain't never got no cold, but 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 because you keep saying you mess around and you'll catch one. See, just because you got a symptom don't mean you got to help me, Holy Ghost. And when he when, when the enemy sent a symptom, talk to him. Look, thank you, God. This brother told me one time it was so good. Doctors are simply practicing me. You and I have the great physician, the true healer, amen. So we, sometimes you can't take the word of somebody that's just practicing medicine. Sometimes you got to take your situation to the one who can heal, deliver, and set free. As a matter of fact, since he created me, he knows how to heal me. Oh, glory. From the crown of my head to the, look, and every now and then, if I got a sore, he'll sit, he may send a dog. Come on now. You got to understand. Your help can come from unlikely sources. It ain't always what it looks like. See, baby, yeah, 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 you know, I went to the doctor and then they gave me these medicine pills and they healed me. No, man, uh, uh, I was laid out there and I lifted up my pan leg and that dog came and licked it. You see, see, it don't, it sound better to talk about the doctor than the dog coming and helping to lick it. And sometimes we're more concerned with how it, oh, God, help me. We're more concerned with how it looks. It turns out my leg action. Just on my leg brighter than my face. All right. That's my wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Come on. Let me, let, me, let me finish because she done messed me up, Alex. It ain't always what it looks like. My legs might be brighter than my face. But all of me look good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you see that muscle. Man. So you gonna mess around and have me flexing it. <laughs> Listen, come on, stand to your feet. One of the things about God, God is so good. You and I gotta realize that it's not what it looks like. It looked like the rich man was the one who had it going on. Only to find out he wasn't. The Bible tells us, don't go around having a form of God. If I could, glory to God, as my wife comes, help me out. Uh, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Pharaoh uh, decided, I let them go, but I'm going to go get them. I'm going to get them. Back. And they had, he pursued them to the Red Sea. Pharaoh's behind them. They got mountains to the left. They got mountains to the right. And the Red Sea is in front. It wasn't what it looked like. It looked like they were in a hopeless situation. But God had brought them out by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God caused that pillar of fire to get between uh, the Israelite people and Pharaoh's army. Then God caused a strong east wind to blow all night, and He parted the Red Sea. Not only did it part it, it dried up the ground, and the children of Israel crossed over on dry land because it wasn't what it looked like. Glory to God. Uh, when Pharaoh decided, I'm going to chase him up in here, glory to God, uh, Moses raised his hand, and God closed it in, and glory to God, the army of Pharaoh was drowned in the Red Sea. The Bible says never to be seen again. Why? Because it wasn't what it looked like. Joshua, glory to God, when God told him, I need you to take Jericho, but it's got a big old wall around it. He said, this is what I need you to do. I don't need you to get no arrows and no spears, no chariots. I just need you to walk around the city for uh, uh, six days. Then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around it seven times. And then I want them carrying the ark, and then I want them to come and shout. When you shout, the walls don't fall flat. Amen. It, it, it didn't seem logical. It ain't logical. Oh, but see, there's a lot of things about God may not be logical for us, but they're logical for God. Uh, when they shout at the Bible, declares that the walls fell flat. Good God, my Oh, our God is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. Oh, holly. can I just tell you about Jesus? I got to get here. Oh, holly. On the cross, it looked like he had lost. 
on the cross and looked like it was all over. All the devil was having a party, hallelujah. <laughs> all they throw it down, hallelujah, because it looked like he lost. But the scripture said, had they had known, uh, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, amen. Because when he hung his head and died, oh, hallelujah, all power, glory, God, wash it down. Oh, it looked bleak, it looked dark, why, 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 why? Because as he's hanging on the cross, glory, 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 glory to God, all of the sin of the world started to get on him. Amen. Oh, he had to hang out there for a while. Oh, can I go here? Because Sasha had no sin in earth. Mm -hmm. And it took a while for all of our sin to come and be canceled out on the cross. Glory to God. Oh, so good to make But when he walked in the head, he said, Give me your sin. Give me your Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't we so excited? Aren't we so happy? Aren't you excited? Because, you know, we can say, hold on, because help is on the way. And help is not even on the way. Help is here. Hallelujah. Right? Oh, my God. Praise God. And, and I can look around the room, and I can even look in the mirror. And I can know that there's always some kind of something going on some kind of attack going on, right? And, but all I got to do is just know that he knows my name. He knows my name, but thank God I know his name too, right? And that's the, that's, that's key. That makes the difference, right? Because he know everybody's name because he created every single one of us. He created us. But the key right now is, do you know his name? Like the old people used to go, do you know the man, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have a personal relationship with him? When you have that personal relationship, that means that you can have that conversation. If I don't have a personal relationship with him, I don't have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. Amen? So right now, I ask you this morning, where will you spend eternity? Right? Pastor pointed out, there are two plays. You know, you could be on the judgment seat. You could be standing before the throne of judgment. Or you can be standing before the throne where you've accepted Jesus. And you're going to understand and get your rewards. Okay, now this is key. So we're going to talk about that throne of judgment right now. Are you going to end up in that one where he's just going to point out to you everything that you ever did? Or, and you don't have a lawyer, the only lawyer that you have is you, right? Okay, or are you going to be on the other one that you have a lawyer, and that lawyer is Jesus Christ? And on that one, the fight is fixed, right? Because the son, he's the son of the judge, right? So it's already fixed. Which one are you on today? You have an opportunity while bre your breath is still running. Why you still blood is still running warm in your blood. This day, you make the choice. Because we say tomorrow is not promised to you. The next minute is not promised to you. We never know when we just going to fall down. Right? So this day, don't put off today or tomorrow. Don't put off what you need to do now for in a few minutes. 
Think about it. This is a personal thing. I keep saying this is a personal thing. It don't matter about whoever is around you. This is between you and him. So at this time, think about it. And if you are not sure beyond the shadow of a doubt where are you going to spend eternity, this is your opportunity. And I have the answer for you. If you don't know, you can know. And all you have to do is just acknowledge that I don't know. And because I don't know, I'm a sinner. And right now, he says that all you have to do is in the word is confess that I'm a sinner. And once you confess, you have to confess that you need him. And just say, Father, I'm a sinner. But right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my life and save me. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I confess that I haven't been right. But right now, I want simply ask you to come into my life and become my Lord and my Savior. And by faith, I believe that it's done. Now, that's simple, but it takes this big thing. you got to believe it, that he's coming to your life, and he saved you, and he saved your spirit man, which means your spirit man, was been, you're, you're reconnected. Now, your flesh ain't saved. Your flesh is the same old flesh, and you're going to always have these battles. But what it is is you want your spirit man to be dominant and not your flesh. You're going to have fight, but your spirit man is in control. And that's all you have to do. So I give you a moment to think about it. Where will you spend eternity? And all you got to do is you have to say that out loud so the enemy can hear that you are now child of God. Now, next. Okay, I've said that prayer before. I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I know that when I get to heaven, I'm going to, I'm going to end up in heaven. But where? Because, you know, we still are going to have to go through and still we got to be accountable for everything we do. So, I did, but I was not an agent for you while I was here on this earth. I just got in. I didn't do anything. And he saves us because he's got purpose in your life. Because each one of us are charged to go out and to bring more people to recruit for the kingdom of God. You know, so you got to think, what am I doing? What example am I? When I walk in the room, do, the, do people say, that's a child of God right there? Or when I walk in the room, they say, oh, Lord, here she comes, right? And you got to think about that. And so this day, I asked you if you re- need to rededicate, reconnect. We all miss it. But all you got to do is we can all be that prodigal son, and all you got to do is just come home. And daddy's quickly to forgive. So right now, if that's you, just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm sorry. And please reconnect me. Please bring me back. And he did it. Amen? It's that simple. You ain't got to come and do a bunch of stuff. That's a personal thing between you and him. Now, next is, though, once you do it, either way, he needs to see your action. Are you, do, are you, do you have action? Do, then when, do you, when you walk in the room, do they say it? Amen. And that's what he needs to do, action. Then it's time to get the work. Now, if you need some place to work, we invite you to come and share with us and become a member. So the doors of our church are open. If you need a place to work, a place to call home, we welcome you to come and become a part of our fellowship. Amen? Amen. So we're happy right now. Let's give the Lord 
a hand clap of praise. We take the temperature and we thank God that when he comes back, that this room going to be empty and we're going to all go up with him. Amen? Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Merry Christmas. It's tithing and offering time. Amen. You know, you know Pastor mentioned uh, Elijah and Ahab uh, earlier today. And, you know, a lot of people remember, uh, well, Bible scholars, I see a lot of us remember Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And you know that, uh, and Pastor mentioned about the three and a half years where there was no rain. And, you know, um, and, you, and uh, just that scripture in Elijah, I'm sorry, James chapter 5, uh, it says that uh, Elijah was a man of subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that that might not rain, and it rained not on the earth in a space of three and a half years, three years and six months. He said no rain in the earth. So no rain in the earth. And, you know, um, I, I was thinking this is a, a good example, though, for us when you think about it, of when you give God, what you have and how God can and just trust God and how God said, just give me what you got. And let me, let me show you what I can do though. They didn't rain in three and a half years on the earth. And after the prophets of Baal did what they did and Elijah challenged them, if you hadn't read this, it's over in first Kings chapter 18. And they had this showdown with these, with, with the prophets of God and the prophets of, of Baal and the prophets of Baal did what they were going to do, trying to make it rain, et cetera, bring rain down. And after they did what they were going to do, let me, tell you, let me tell you what Elijah did. I'm going to read some of it to you. In 1 Kings chapter 18, what they, they did. Now, remember that in rain now. 1 Kings chapter 18, starting in verse 33, Elijah said, fill four barrels with water. Now, these were no small barrels either. Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice. And this is on the altar of God and on the wood. Verse 30, he said, do it a second time. And they did a second time. Then he said, do it a third time. So they did it three times. And then it said, and they did it a third time, and the water ran down about the altar. And then it said, and he filled the trench also with them. So now you got the priest. The priest is also pouring water on the altar. So three bad, three, three times, and now the priest is also helping out. So he's doing the this, this same thing. Now, if you go on, and then it say, of course, fire for heaven came down, consumed the altar consume the water, consume the dirt, you know, consume everything around the altar. But then if you keep on reading, it says, starting at verse, at verse, at verse 41, I'm sorry, I'm going to fast forward, go down, and it says, uh, verse 43, and he said to the servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. He said, go again seven times. In the past, in the seventh time, he said, behold, there arise a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So you give them a little. You don't have much. It ain't rain three and a half years. All that water they poured out, and here come the rain. That's how God do it. God blesses us to be a blessing. But you got to trust him, though. You have to trust him, though. That's the last said, trust God and watch what God can do. It hadn't rained, but trust him. He got no water, but give him what you got. And let me show what I'm going to do. And he may rain come. Pray with us. Let's bow our heads. Our gracious Father who are in heaven. Oh, Father, we just want to thank you for another beautiful day. And, Father, we just want to thank you just for our very lives. And, Father, we just also just want to thank you for all you do just in our lives. And, Father, we just here only to give you what's already yours. 
Oh, Father, thanking you for just the opportunity. Thank you for your blessings. And, and Father, we just want to ask you just to bless these tithes and these offers. And we ask it in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Would you bring your tithes and offerings around the walls of the church from the rear to the front? Thank you. 